This is section 4.5, Fundamental Theorem of Algebra. And the Fundamental Theorem of Algebra says a polynomial f of x of degree n, when n is greater than or equal to 1, has at least one complex 0. All right, let's do a little work and see if we can figure this out. A polynomial of degree n has at most n distinct zeros. So in other words, if you have a third degree, and we've talked about this before, if you have a third degree, you can have at most three distinct solutions. All right, let's look at this example. Determine a polynomial of degree 4 with leading coefficient 2 and zeros of negative 3, 5, i, and negative i. So the factored form would simply be, you've got a leading coefficient of 2, so you got a 2, and then you have x plus 3, x minus 5, x minus i, and x plus i. And so if it asked for a factored form, that's what you would get. If you had to expand it, that means you've got to do that work. You've got to multiply all of this business out. So let's start that. And let's take the real parts over here and the imaginary parts over here. So let's do this. We have x squared plus 3x minus 5x, 3, 5, and a minus 15, and we've got 2. On this side, we've got x squared minus i squared. We don't have a middle term. And then what did we say i squared was? It is i squared is negative 1. So this is going to be x minus a negative 1 that becomes x squared plus 1. Over here, we've got 2x squared, 2 times x squared minus 2x minus 15. And then we're going to have to ultimately multiply it by that. All right, let's, um, let's go ahead and multiply these two together, and then at the end we'll multiply by 2. So x squared times x squared would be x to the fourth. x squared times 1. Well, let's do it this way. Well, let's multiply x squared times all three. And then we have minus 2x cubed. And we have minus 15x squared. And then 1 times all of these. Plus x squared minus 2x minus 15. Okay. So, and we've got all that multiplied by 2. Let's combine anything that we can combine. And then finally, we have f of x equals 2x to the 4th minus 4x cubed minus 28x squared minus 4x minus 30. All right. And then another theorem that we might take note of, the conjugate zero theorem. If a polynomial has only real coefficients, and if x plus bi is a zero of f of x, then its conjugate is also a zero. So that just simply means if you know you have one unreal solution, one complex number, you're going to have its partner, its conjugate. So if you had uh, one of the solutions was negative 6i, you also know you have a positive 6i. If you had um, 3 plus i was a solution, then you would know that 3 minus i was a solution. So you're always just going to have the partners. All right, let's look at some problems. We've got about 10 problems to look at. All right, determine the real zeros and the number of imaginary zeros. 
If it's a real zero, you're going to have an x-intercept. You're going to cross the x. Does this one cross the x? No. So there are, and it's quadratic, which means we've got degree 2. That means there's two zeros completely. None of them are real, so we're here. Two imaginary zeros. Let's look at number 2. All right, it crosses right here. And it is degree 3, so we have one real one and two imaginary. That'll be right here. We're just analyzing those. All right, so we have degree 5, so we know there's a total of 5. It crosses 1, 2, 3 times, so that means 3 real ones and 2 imaginary. So we just have to find the one that says that. Here it is, first one. Three real, two imaginary. All right, find the complete factored form and the expanded form. We have degree two, so we know we have two solutions. It tells us one of them is 9i, one's negative 9i. So the factored form would be x minus 9i times x plus 9i. And that's going to go in this box. Then we've got to multiply that out. And when we do that, we've got x squared minus 81i squared. The i squared is negative 1, so that changes that to x squared plus 81. And that is our expanded form. All right, let's do the same thing on number five. All right, we have four different zeros, degree four. So our factored form, we're going to have x minus one times x plus one times x minus two i times x plus two i. All right, now we've got to multiply all of that out, and we do have a leading coefficient of 11, so we need to remember that, okay? All right, so we've got 11 times, let's do this multiplication, x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 4i squared. All right, that's 11 times x squared minus 1 times x squared plus 4. That i squared makes that sign change. All right, let's multiply that out. We get x to the 4th. We get minus x squared plus 4x squared minus 4. All of that times 11. And so our final answer, 11x to the 4th minus 11x squared plus 0. Oh, I missed that number, didn't I? Yeah, that's plus 4 and minus 1, so that would be plus 3x squared. Caught myself. So 33x squared minus 44. And that would be our expanded form of that one. All right, find the zeros given that one zero is k. All right, well, if we know one zero is k and this is cubic, we could do synthetic division and we could eliminate and get it down to quadratic. So, two-thirds is going in our backwards L. We're going to have these coefficients, 3, negative 2, 75, and minus 50. Remember, we're going to bring this down. 3 times two-thirds is 2. So 2 goes there. Add those, you get 0. 0 goes there. So that's 75. Two-thirds of 75 
is 50. So 50 goes there, which does give us a zero remainder. So now we uh, started out with cubic, so now we're at quadratic. So we've got 3 three x squared plus 75 equals zero. 3x squared equals negative 75. x squared equals negative 25. So x is plus or minus 5i. Now, the way it asked for the solution, what are the zeros? So it wants you to list this one as well. You might miss it if you don't. So you would have that and a positive 5i, and those would be your answers. 7, we're going to find all the zeros of this. All right. Write the complete factored form. All right, so we need to solve that. x squared plus 100 equals 0. x squared is negative 100. x is plus or minus 10i. So our factored form would be x minus 10i, x plus 10i. And then I think that's my B part, sorry. And the zeros would just be the 10i and the negative 10i. All right, let's look at this one. We need to solve this to get our solutions. Let's factor out a 12x, which leaves x squared plus 1 equals 0. So we have x is 0, x squared is negative 1, x is plus or minus i. So the zeros are 0, i, negative i, and the factored form will be twelve x times x minus i times x plus i, which would give us x squared plus one right there. All right. Nine, same thing. Um, we're going to have to do this one. We could, um, let's look at doing grouping. Looks like it might work for us. If I take out x squared, I'm left with x minus 5 plus, and I want x minus 5 here. If I take out 9, I have x minus 5. So then I have x squared plus 9 times x minus 5. And this is x squared equals negative 9 x is plus or minus 3i, and x is 5, a badly made 5. Um, so the zeros are 5, negative 3i, and positive 3i, and the factored function would just be x minus 5, x plus 3i, x minus 3i. All right, we're going to solve this one. I think we can solve this four-termed one the same way by grouping. Um, let's get them all on one side. x cubed minus 3x squared plus 9x minus 27 equals 0. Now, you could, you know, if you wanted to use your calculator, you could put 
y1 to be x cubed and y2 to be this and see where they intersect. The only problem will be you'll only get the real one and you would still have some work to do to get the other. So this may be the easiest way to get all your answers. Let's group this. If we pull out x squared, we are left with x minus 3. Plus, if we pull out 9, we have x minus 3. Put these two together. And this is x squared plus 9 equals 0. x squared is negative 9. x is plus or minus 3i. And this one is x equals 3. So there's our three solutions. Let's see. And that's all we're asked to do. So we would have 3 comma 3i negative 3i. Okay. All right. I think that will help you practice with section 4.5.